Um, I have a video of Michael Irvin that was... Shit. Fuck. Damn. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking win. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear. What's up, Joe Bear? I know you've been missing us, man. We've been missing you, too. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody is having a great day because I just can't wait my man Game Time Brian will be here. My man Chef David Wiley will be here. We are headed to Detroit early tomorrow morning where we will be bringing you coverage like none other from in the streets of Detroit as it all happens. I hope you guys watch and hang out with us because we're going to have a ball. We're going to have a ball because the thing is, is, you know, all the mock drafts, thank God we can be done with the mock drafts. I can't stand mock drafts. Okay. I'm sorry. It's just ridiculous. You literally make up 50 the scenarios. And of course, when you get two or three, see, I told you in my mock draft, I was, get, get out of here with that shit. Get out of here with that shit. What the Cowboys are going to do, who the hell knows? The only things we know about the Cowboys is one, they like to get the highest prospect at a position. And two, in the second round, they want to gamble with the pick and try and get first round talent on a scratch and debt pile. Now, how they go about it, we don't know. We've got holes to fill. We need a center, a tackle or guard, whichever one will fit the bill. And that actually plays right into the Cowboys hand of trying to get the best prospect at a position. Centers generally don't go real high in the draft. Same thing with guards. Left tackles do. Wide receivers do. Quarterbacks do. And it sounds like the Cowboys have lost out on a quarterback. Just a few days ago, they were talking about how the Cowboys must draft Michael Penix. And the funny thing is, is I said, you're telling me that the Cowboys who have Dak Prescott at $55 million, have Cooper Rush, who's been a career backup, who won four games out of five in replacing Dak when he broke his thumb, who's on the roster, and Trey Lance, a guy that San Francisco traded three number ones and a second to move up and get, who the Cowboys traded for and is on the roster, that we still need to get a quarterback. And I said, you're going to tell me that all these teams out here that literally have nobodies or journeymen as the starters, like Minnesota, for example, or a, a team like New York that ended up getting... <laughs> Danny Dollar Store, that those guys, they're good at quarterback? Come on, man. This is some bull jiggity. Now, in talking to him, and I can't wait till game time gets here because, you know, he, he's getting all his work done this morning. He's going to be all packed. He's going to be driving down the road. He's going to get here. He's done. Me, on the other hand, I'll still be working on getting my shit together, but we will be live streaming and talking about the draft and getting things together. His whole thing. His whole thing for weeks now has been the Cowboys should trade back. Well, that, that sounds good. But first of all, you have to have somebody who wants to trade up. There's a lot of things you may want to do. You know, you may want one of those great quarterbacks to fall the way down to you. But that doesn't mean it's going to happen. That's the difference here. It sounds great that, you know, hey, maybe the Cape Cowboys can move back get powers as a center and, and, and then take another pick and then trade up and, and get uh, uh, one of the running backs that they want. And now all of a sudden you got two studs. That sounds great. I would love to see something like that happen. But knowing the Cowboys, 
they'll throw a wrench into things because you could look and say the year that we drafted C.D. Lamb, we had more pressing needs. We definitely had pressing needs at linebacker because we were hurting so bad after getting rid of Jalen Smith and having question marks on Leighton Van Der Esch that we still haven't answered yet. But we drafted C.D. Lamb because he fell down our way. So all bets are off. I didn't see them taking Mozzie Smith last year, but I was like, if this guy can play, it would have been a difference maker. If Mozzie had came out of the box like Reggie White and we had plugged him in the middle and he stopped the run, hey, maybe we don't lose to the Green Bay Packers. It was a risk that they took. But then every pick is a risk. Every pick is a risk. There are no guarantees in the draft. None. To me, it's like a 50-50 crapshoot. 50-50 chance that it's going to come out that you got a stud or 50% chance that you got a bust. Nobody really knows. The only thing I do know is when they say he's a can't-miss player, more times than not, they miss. Now, we've heard that the Cowboys are interested in this player and that player. Um, Now we're hearing that they're interested in uh, guard uh, Burton. Um, I can't remember his first name. Um, Graham Burton. That they're interested in guard uh, Graham Burton, um, who can play all five positions. Um, we've heard them, of course, interested in, um, Trey Benson running back who may be the top one out there. We've also heard that they are, um, interested in, uh, a multitude of guys. We just don't know who that they want. We don't really know. Now, again, if you can trade back and get more picks, that would be optimal for the Cowboys because they have so many picks. And you look at this draft, from what I'm told for most people, is it's not top-heavy with a lot of great players that you really, unless you're trying to get a quarterback, want to trade up for. But there's a lot of guys that are basically from like 20 to 40 that are all really good players. And if you can get a couple of really good players, really good plug-and-start play guys now, that's what you really and truly want. And I'm going to go to, before we get out of here, go to ESPN, their mock draft where they have Michael Penix to the Seahawks. Again, I thought we were supposed to be drafting him. Let's go to the tape. Is there something that one team is doing, Mike, even as we speak? right this minute that could change the entire top of the draft. Greeny, the Minnesota Vikings should be on the phone with the Arizona Cardinals and not getting off the phone until there is a deal right now. In fact, that call should have been made the second that um, Kirk Cousins and the agent told them that he was going to be a Atlanta Falcon. And so to me, I want to be proactive. I want to box out the competition and I want to make sure that I am drafting a quarterback at number four. So it's interesting. They have already made that one move that bought them the extra ammunition in this offseason to to try and go up there, Dan Graziano. What do you think? All of a sudden, number four becomes a very interesting spot. So Monty Austin Ford, the Cardinals GM, has come out and said he does not want to make any trade for that pick until he's on the clock. He wants to see which quarterbacks go off the board, one, two, three, and then that will determine his market. Those conversations have definitely been had. I believe that the Vikings know what it would take to get the fourth pick. I believe the Raiders know what it would take to get the fourth pick. I believe the Giants know what it would take to get the fourth pick. But the question is, will they make the move? Last year, during the draft, Tennessee had a contingency. They had a trade. They were going to go up uh, to three and take C.J. Stroud. But once Stroud went number two, they backed out of the trade, uh, and Arizona and Houston did a trade instead uh, that ended up with the Will Anderson pick. So uh, mm-hmm. it will depend on what happens with those first three picks, what Arizona can get at four, and Austin Ford knows that. Orlovsky, go. Yeah, it starts at two. What do the Washington Commanders do at two? And then what do the New England Patriots do at three? If, if I understand where Mike T's coming from. I've said this. If 
Those guys go one, two, three, and J.J. McCarthy is left there at four. I think Minnesota goes and gets the move, and I think J.J. McCarthy automatically becomes the front runner for Offensive Rookie of the Year. He's ideal when it comes to his skill set with Kevin O'Connell's play-action pass offense. The really interesting thing will be if McCarthy goes above number four. Okay, like, let's mm -hmm. live in the world with Caleb one, Jaden Daniels two, and then J.J. McCarthy three. Does Minnesota want to get really aggressive for Drake May? I know that they love Drake May, but then they have to be patient with Drake May. And mm -hmm. that will be interesting to see. Do they continue to stay as aggressive with a player that's probably not going to see the field for at least a year or two in Minnesota? Yeah, absolutely. So Mike T, take us through that part of it. Go. Yeah, again, if I'm Minnesota, I have to get a quarterback. And when he's ready to play, look, that's why he went out and signed Sam Darnold. But as sure. soon as you lost Kirk Cousins, you had to get up to four. And what I'm saying is, Greeny, you tell Monty Austin for it, look, I am paying a bill. We're not negotiating. Tell me right now what it's going to cost. And B, if it's J.J. McCarthy or Drake May Greeny, it really doesn't matter because you're making this decision for the next 10 years, not for the next 10 Mike. weeks. So that's why you have Sam Darnold, but you have to get one of these two quarterbacks. Danny. Mike T, is it, is it about getting ahead of the New York Giants? Because I think the Giants have to be aggressive as well. Is it about getting, mm -hmm. uh, making sure you get ahead of the Giants or the Chargers? Well, it's about the Giants. It's about, to me, the Raiders, possibly the Broncos. There's too much variability there. And again, as soon as I lose Kirk Cousins, I am not getting off the phone with the Arizona Cardinals until I have a deal. Monty Austin, for mm -hmm. tell me what the bill three? is. I am paying it because I'm, I'm assuming that New England's taking a quarterback. Graziano, go. Hmm. But, but So it, it's going to all depend on who goes one, two, three, right? If, right? if the Raiders have a deal in place to go to four, but it's only if Jaden Daniels is there, then your market shrinks as soon as, soon as Daniels is picked second. So the, if yeah. you're asking for it, the, the move is to wait. Let, let's say the Giants like Drake May and are only going to go to four from six if it's May there. Then, you know, that, that, that helps you if you're Monty Austin Ford, play the Giants off the Vikings. So he, uh, he has a ton of picks. He has experience from last year doing very, uh, very similar things here, uh, and he's comfortable waiting. I, I think if there's one message that we're getting loud and clear here, the order of the quarterbacks will determine who is interested in coming up and making mm -hmm. these trades. Yes. I'll be fascinated to see what the Giants decide to do. There may be circumstances they do and circumstances they don't. There are three wide receivers that feel as though they've separated themselves in this class. If Arizona wants to make sure they get at least one of those three, they have some wiggle room to play with. Tim Legler's Washington Commanders. Does he there we go. So we're we're going to end right there. To they, they just It just struck me real quick, and I was looking at it. <laughs> uh, I was looking at this because they were talking about New Orleans looking to uh, draft a quarterback. Which is kind of funny because since Drew Brees is retired, they've been trying to get one. You know, they, they got uh, Jameis Winston in there and things. Uh, they had Andy Dalton in there. And they signed um, Derek Carr. And you'll remember Derek Carr has been a guy that, you know, we've had the experts tell us we should go get a veteran like Derek Carr. And here's what's interesting about Derek Carr is I don't think people realize that he signed – in last year, last year, a hundred fifty million dollar contract, hundred and fifty million dollar contract for Derek Carr. But what they did was they structured it so that way his cap number was only seven point two million dollars. His cap number this year is twelve million. Now, of course next year the following year it's 51 and then it's 61 and 26 and so you see how teams make contracts to work within a cap now the two teams that are really screwed by screwed the pooch was the Cleveland Browns, which I don't think anybody's going to see a fully guaranteed quarterback con contract again, where they restructured it the first two years, and they have a $63 million hit the next three years, and there's not much they can do about it other than take a huge dead hit. But when you take contracts to the very last year where there's no room, no wiggle room on it, that's when you get screwed. I don't think the Cowboys seem to understand. If you've got a year or two left on a contract 
and you know that the highest paid is $30 million, you can say, we're going to put an extension on for you, C.D. Lamb. That's at $30 million a year. You're the highest paid. But if you have this year and the following year where those numbers are already lower because it's in his rookie contract, which was done years ago, if you're putting that money down the road in two years, when you actually start paying that money, that $30 million per year, the price for wide receivers would probably be in the 40s. So that's a way of making the player realize he's getting the highest paid and is happy. But in all actual, when he's getting it, he is not. And that's a way that you get around the cap. The problem is now is you ended up having to pay Dak Prescott in today's dollars the full amount. There's no room to hide it or maneuver it. And they had to keep restructuring it because they screwed the pooch on other contracts. Understand, they did Dak Prescott's contract and immediately restructured it to get cap space because of Zeke Elliott's deal, because of Jalen Smith's deal, because of dead money that they've taken. This is where the Cowboys have their biggest failure, is understanding how to use the cap. All right, good people. I've got some work to do to get ready for my crew to be here, and I just can't wait to be bringing you everything about the NFL draft. I'm Mark Holmes, and... I appreciate you guys. Peace. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report.